So the area we're standing in was actually uh, one of the areas that was most affected by Hurricane Katrina. It's under about 10-ish feet of water. In some places you can still see the watermark. My name is Megan Williams. Um, I am the Urban Water Program Manager for the City of New Orleans. Uh, I was 16 when Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005. We're watching everything on the news and as a 60 year old, I'm not really comprehending what's happening. And then we went and saw a family member's home. They had gotten about eight feet of flooding. I very distinctly remember driving and pulling up to their house and they had a fence around their property and there was a fish stuck in the fence. And this is a probably a six foot, five foot fence, something like that. And it was stuck at the very top. The mud line was at the roof inside of her home. Everything that you could possibly see inside of the home was caked with mud. And I think that was the first time that I told my mom, I want to help fix this. I didn't know what that meant at 16. But from there, I went into uh, civil engineering at the University of New Orleans. Uh, from there, I turned into a road work engineer and from there into a drainage engineer. We are currently standing at the uh, large bioswale at the Pontilly drainage project. This was the first green infrastructure project of this scale uh, to be implemented in the city of New Orleans. So we're standing, we're on the edge, we can see suburban streets here and there's houses just on one side and then there's this green area of space and the middle of it there's a kind of a sunken, kind of like a shallow trench and it's got plants in it. it. That's kind of exactly what it is, it's kind of a sunken garden. But what's happening is all along the path of the bioswale there are what we call runnels. So what it does is it actually accepts water off of the street and reroutes it into this large sort of sunken garden. This biosoil by itself can hold about a million gallons of water because of how large and how deep it is in, in some sections. So it kind of functions in two ways. It'll capture water off the street, but it also captures water where it falls. It'll fill up and over time, within about 24 hours, it really slowly releases all the water back into the drainage system. So the idea here is not to hold on to the water, it's just to give the drainage system a chance by slowing down the water, by kind of holding onto it and just so it doesn't overwhelm the system. Correct. So what we're dealing with in New Orleans is an excess amount of rain in a very short window of time. And because we pump all of our rainwater out, uh, we are really on a mission to figure out ways to alleviate some of the pressure on our pump stations. So we've installed green infrastructure throughout the city, we've got some planned, but the intention is to capture water and just hold it back for just a little bit and really slowly release it back into the system. But it, what's lovely about this is, I mean, at the moment it's a kind of sort of grey mm -hmm. <laughs> spring day, but I can see that a bit later in the year this is also going to look really pretty. You know, this is a nice thing to have in your neighbourhood, so it's not the kind of facilities, it, you know, it's not, it's not concrete, it's not mm -hmm. heavy infrastructure, it's sort of, it looks very natural and it's a pleasant thing to be by. Uh, these plants will blossom, all of the plants that we use are native plants as well, so they typically can thrive in most of our conditions. With the green infrastructure, it really adds a, a really nice layer of kind of what nature wants to do in a neighbourhood. This is a big project, protecting a suburban neighbourhood that had enough spare space to store the water. The closer to the city centre you move, the less green space there is, and resilience is tougher to build in. In these badly drained streets, individual residents are being encouraged to do their bit. We have to stop thinking of our pumping system as our first line of defence. We had to back up onto our front porch and look at our own front yard and, and look at our yard as the first line of defence, and that's very empowering. Dana Ines from Urban Conservancy leads the Front Yard Initiative. It offers small grants to householders to adapt their yards to a changing climate. All across the city, you can spot little FYI signs sticking out of verges and little curbside gardens. This also alleviates the water. Oh, so it's yeah. collecting rainwater. So it's pretty full right now. And what do you use the water for? My garden back here. I have a satsuma tree. Dana took me to Hoffman Triangle, an inner city neighbourhood of small homes and businesses. When it rains heavily, as it so often does here, the streets flood, but Anthony Davis is making sure that his home stays dry, planting a tiny native flower garden, collecting the rainwater in barrels and helping to convert the vacant plot next door. This was basically an empty lot, and so it was all by choice. So I talked to the church owner, and talked about trying to do a community garden here. As you see, they kind of dig deep, and that way it doesn't pool as well and can absorb some of the water, the garden would. 
And so, it's, you know, all of these interventions, they're kind of helping the city of New Orleans yes, stay yeah. here. Yes, and yeah. Presumably that's important to you yes, as well. Very because you, very you, important. This place like, matters. Yeah, because I, I've been through Katrina and it was, it was a mess, you know. And then even after I evacuated in all the water, I came back as a cleanup crew, you know, and it was, to be honest with you, it looked like a war area. I mean, because I came back probably within the second week of mm -hmm. Katrina and there were still corpses that were just laying somewhere, you know, bloated up. And so um, it was. Um, yeah, if I can avoid that and help the city and help others because it costs a lot, it costs a lot, you know, it really does. My name is Al Duvernay. I'm New Orleans, born and raised uh, by profession. I'm a paleontologist and worked in the oil and gas field. We're in front of your house and there's a, there's a reasonable amount of space here, but it doesn't look like many gardens do here. It's got these sort of wooden terraces, these little steps, and the plants here look different to the plants in the Herat houses around. Yes, yes, uh, it, it stands out. When you look up and down the block, you see these uh, very pristine, well-manicured lawns. It takes a lot of energy to, to maintain that. Fertilizers and, you know, weed killers and, and things like that. So what I've done here with the help of some very competent people is created sort of a natural environment. You know, terraced uh, rain gardens and I've replaced the grass with uh, native plants. It attracts a variety of, of species, um, lizards and frogs and snakes and, you know, all sorts of insects. Um, I've always been keen to try to maintain a natural environment and whatnot, but then when I got connected with Urban Conservancy with their urban water management plan, the FYI, Front Yard Initiative, and got connected with Macedon, the folks that actually did this work. That put a whole different spin on, on my yard and my idea of managing water. Typically when it rains here, when we have a good rain, a frog strangler. A just, frog strangler. A frog strangler, right. <laughs> Uh, That's or my even new not. favorite <laughs> word. Or, or even not, just, just uh, normal rain. Typically, the street right here in front of my house will flood. Torrents of water running down, you know, between my house and, and my neighbor's houses, running into the street. Because I, I have no water running off into the street. Because uh, what we have is these terrace rain gardens and whatnot, and, a, and we built a closed-loop French drain around here. Did it require a lot of expertise? Was it a difficult process? Because it sounds... No expertise at all for me. It's, the, <laughs> it's, the, it's these young ladies right here that, br that brought all of the expertise. Well, let's meet you. Do you want to just tell us who you are? Hi, I'm Arian Hall with the Mastodon LLC. And I'm Louisa Abale. We pretty much were here from the genesis when Al told us what his issues were on the property. We kind of came, assessed, did some initial runoff calculations, and then designed an initial system based off of that. We knew that he had a really significant grade going from the house to the street. So we wanted to do something to slow down the water, which is why we created this terrace effect for the rain gardens to sit inside of, um, and then also to control erosion issues. How did you get into this? What's your motivation for, for doing all of this? What got you going? We were doing carpentry prior to this, and it really started post-Katrina when we were rebuilding homes, and we had houses that just had repeated flooding and we would have to keep going and fixing the floors and we were like, oh man, what are we gonna do about this? And then it took one friend of ours who was like, why don't we do a French drain? And we're like, what is that? Uh, so a French drain is essentially an excavated trench, typically conveying water from one point to another, usually like a downspout, and then it'll lead into something like a rain garden or it just holds water. And we were like, can we do this with volunteers? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, go ahead. And the floor stopped flooding. So we learned that we were onto something. And then from there, it just kind of like ignited, I guess, a passion, especially here where, you know, you see a lot of the effects of climate change We're at the front door. So if you could do something like this in, in every street in New Orleans, in front of every house, what difference would it make? I think we would see significantly less flooding you're talking about, on average, between 800 to 1,200 gallons of storage in a small system. You know, we can really all be able to capture um, two to three inches that's fallen on our property before anything is running off. All these years later, so many years after that disaster, how do you feel about the future of the city now? You know, we know more about climate change. We know more about how it's going to get worse. We're also better engineers. Yeah. 
How do you think about the future of New Orleans now? There's no longer this sort of like, what are you crazy people doing choosing to live there? Because it's not just about New Orleans anymore. We're all feeling vulnerable. It, it has helped us all understand that just the unpredictability of the world in which we live and in our community, wherever our community is, how do we create the stability that humans crave? And it looks different in different places, but the Front Yard Initiative is part of this effort to create stability in an uncertain world.